Hello, everyone, and welcome to our STEM career session. Um, this session is our NOVA programs um, talking about our automotive technology and horticulture program. Um, we have two of our faculty members from NOVA who are joining us today, and they are going to be sharing some information about our different programs. What we're going to do is go ahead and get started. I'd like to introduce our first presenter here. I'm going to stop sharing, um, but our first presenter today is going to be uh, Laura Garcia. She's with our Automotive Technologies Program, and we've had a really great opportunity to work with Laura on a lot of different on a lot of different um, activities um, throughout this year. And my name again is Tiffany Rozier. I'm with uh, Nova Systemic, and I help with the STEM outreach for um, the college. And Brittany Hollis is my coworker, my colleague who works in the IET division, and she's the career coach. So. We work to coordinate all of these different presentations for you all throughout the, the summer and throughout the year. And so I'll go ahead and turn it over to Laura. And I think you're on mute, Laura, so. <laughs> there you okay. go. Thank you, Tiffany. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, Systemic has, has really been wonderful um, in, in providing a lot of these opportunities uh, for everyone to join in. Um, so I'm just going to talk uh, as briefly as possible about automotive technology uh, at NOVA. It's a little challenging because we do have a lot of programs and there's a lot of little bits and pieces. So um, as I go through each um, area, so to speak, uh, at the end, I'll see if anyone has questions and uh, I'll try to answer your questions as best as I possibly can at this moment. Um, and at the end, uh, I'll have my contact information available to anyone who would like to write that down and uh, send me an email anytime. Um, and uh, also, uh, there is a registration lab coming up that is automotive specific if you guys are thinking, okay, yeah, I think I'm, I'm ready to register for some classes. Um, so this is uh, just a little picture of us uh, during uh, Dia del Niño. Uh, so that was a wonderful event that we held on campus and that's our Corvette uh, right here in the very front and right next to it is the white uh, ATSV. So those are two of our actual training cars that we use in our GM ASAP program. Um, and yeah, we do actually take them apart and put them back together. With any luck, we get to actually put them back together. <laughs> so. Sorry about that. Um, so some of the different uh, courses that or programs that we offer, we have the GM ASAP um, course or program, and that is really uh, our flagship program. Uh, so basically the way it works is you come into work, or I'm sorry, you come into school for eight weeks, and then the other eight weeks you're out at a paid internship. Um, getting the real world hands on experience. So I like to call it our all in one program. So I'll speak about that first. Um, and then we'll also talk about the collision repair program, um, our global automotive, speak a little bit about diesel and welding, although diesel and welding, those are at the Manassas campuses uh, or the Manassas campus only. So, all right. So GM ASAP program. Um, just a little bit of an overview. Basically what it is, is General Motors manufacturer who uh, manufactures Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, um, and Cadillac. They have partnered with us so that we can provide training to train technicians uh, for GM dealers. And what they provide us are a whole bunch of vehicles. We're getting new vehicles every month uh, from them. It's ridiculous. Um, and uh, they also uh, help us uh, in a lot of other ways, you know, the different softwares and tools, equipment and things that we uh, use in the actual shop environment. Um, and in exchange, we just provide our students with GM training. Um, so you get basically all the same stuff that you would in the global program, but you also get that additional manufacturer training piece. Um, and that kind of helps you earn more money at the end of your two year stint. Um, also, it is a full ASAP, uh, I'm sorry, full associate degree program. And uh, so yeah, there's not a whole lot of difference except you get that real world experience piece. Um, so we uh, want to try to collect as many qualified students as possible. Um, right now we're looking at accepting uh, 12 students. We have six already signed up. Um, so we do have a few spots left. 
for those of you who are interested in applying and you can do that online. Um, okay, and so we go through all of the vehicle systems. So brakes, powertrains, you know, manual automatic transmissions, suspension and steering, um, engines, engine performance, electronics, air conditioning, the whole nine yards. So it does take the <laughs> a good five semesters to get through that. Um, but it's actually in, in condensed time, you're only in school for like 42 weeks. It's just kind of spread out between here and the shop. Um, and my background is the actual GM ASEP classroom that you guys would, would be in and, and some of my students who just recently graduated. Yay, good for them. Um, so basically how you get in um, is you apply, you go through the same NOVA process as anyone else does. Um, we accept you and then it's time to get you sponsored. So we do have a lot of not just dealers, but AC Delco independent shops and a few fleet shops as well that want to help to train you. Um, so, you know, why come to school when you can go to work and make money in addition to getting your education? So it starts out uh, with this web-based training piece in the top left-hand corner. We give you some online things to do. And then you come in for what's called the instructor-led training. So that's our one-on-one -on -one time. Um, we're in the shop, we're working on cars, doing all kinds of fun stuff. And then you move over into the dealership where, you know, maybe we got to do a brake job, let's say one time. But in the dealership environment, you're gonna do it several times on several different vehicles. Um, and they may have various problems with them and you really get to get that whole troubleshooting piece inside of your education. So there's just no replacement for experience. So this is, you know, how we are able to give you guys that experience that you um, desire. So at the end, you get your associate's degree, 80% of your GM certs. Usually that takes techs five to 10 years um, if they don't go through a program like this. And with all that, you end up getting a big raise. Um, so how it breaks out is through the program, through your internship, if you make as little money as possible and work as little <laughs> as possible, then you would be making, you know, at least $20,000. So that's the minimum over that two year span um, between the time you start in August and then the time you graduate, not that May, but the following May. And um, the cost of tuition over the two year period is, you know, $13,500. Then we add in parking, we add in books, we even add in tools um, because we do want you to start buying tools, okay? Because that is something that techs have to do is they do have to buy their own tools. Um, we don't expect you to have a mammoth amount of tools, but a, a good foundation or something to get started with. So ideally, we would want you to be spending less then you are earning. Okay, so you have a little bit of money for gas and some other things. Um, financial aid and all those things still apply to our program, just like our regular associate degree program, because it is the same degree. Um, and speaking of tools, uh, through our program, we have 30 to 52% off name brand tools. So you can, of course, go to Harbor Freight and um, get some of the tools that, let's say, you don't use as often. Um, I like to buy like, you know, the really tiny sockets, what we call the quarter inch drive socket sets, because I end up losing those a lot because they're so small. Um, so I don't tend to spend a whole lot of money on those things, but certain components like wrenches, ratchets, sockets, things that you're just going to be using time and time and time again, that's when we sort of steer you towards, okay, you know, then you want to make that effort to take advantage of the discount and buy a Snap-on or a Matco set, um, or even a Craftsman set. So there, there, is, um, there are some discount programs offered through Votech, powered by Sears, um, and so then you'll be able to get your Craftsman tools. So that's definitely a big um, incentive. So that's for anybody, uh, whether you're in the ASEP program or the global program, diesel, collision welding, it doesn't matter, okay? You would get that discount. Um, and kind of the same thing for how you get paid. So a lot of times, whenever I'm advising a student, I'm looking for what their end goal is. What is it that you really want to get um, out of your education? And usually that's some type of a, a job or career. So, um, so you know a little bit about the job. Um, the way we get paid normally, and this is not all the time, sometimes there are hourly or salary positions out there, but for the most part, you get paid what's called flat rate. And it's sort of like being paid per job. 
So let's say a break job pays two hours by book. Um, and you know, let's say it's your first break job. So your first break job, it's gonna take you a little longer. That's okay, you just wanna do it right. Um, so that might take you three hours. Unfortunately, you still only get paid the two hours because it's your first time. But once you've done a break job five or six times, usually you can get that break job done within an hour or hour and a half, um, depending on the vehicle and what it is. So in that case, you worked maybe half the time, but you got paid twice as much. Sorry about that. <laughs> the joys of working from home. I got a little dog barking in the background. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, so that's basically how we get paid. And you know, sometimes we say you win some, you lose some. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're really good at what you do and you have a high level of skill set, you're going to get paid more per hour, um, and you're going to be good enough to sort of beat the time um, fairly often. So generally, um, you know, the average of what people make, it's you can't really say there's an average. It's not like, oh, this job pays this amount and that job pays this amount. But I can give you an idea. Um, according to Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, also um, NADA, National Auto Dealers Association, they have some pretty good stats as well and they break it down a little bit better by area. Um, so entry level, that's sort of like, you know, you guys starting out while you're in the program, doing oil changes, tire rotations, um, maybe you get a break job or two, okay? Um, but entry level, you're going to be somewhere in the $20,000 a year range. Um, the average tech, and this is kind of where we expect students to be once they've graduated from the program, or at least within a year, um, you know, we want to see students making somewhere in the $50,000 range uh, mark. Um, after five to ten years in the field, we expect you to be sort of at that expert level, and we want you to be somewhere between sixty and eighty thousand. Okay, and that would be sort of on average. That's the best on average I can give you. Um, there are, of course, people who excel that, and basically the reason we have a two-year associate program is because we eventually want our students to be in that shop foreman and shop manager. Um, arena, okay, because not a lot of technicians go out and get degrees, you know, so you would be, uh, you know, the cream of the crop, so to speak. So those people, I mean, they can be making in the, the six-figure range um, as technicians, but if you get into that shop foreman um, area, then you're making salary, uh, a lot of duties, a lot of long hours, okay, I'm not going to lie, it's hard work and being a shop foreman or being a manager of any type, um, but uh, you know they're making you know 120, 150, um, something around there. You know, depending on where you work. The closer to DC, the more money you make. The farther away, the less. It's kind of uh, typical for any any job. Um, so that's that's generally what we expect income wise um, from our students. Okay, and sorry about that. Um, yeah, we can skip that. And yeah, there's a lot of job opportunities out there as well. Um, luckily, during this COVID crisis, we were considered essential employees. <laughs> so we still had a job, thank goodness. Um, some shops, uh, they did get slow enough that they had to close down for a period of time. Um, some shops ended up... Um, doing alternating days so you basically you know you're working part-time instead of full-time um but we still you know there's the work was still there um so we, we were getting through it and now that things are picking back up and getting back to normal you know we're gonna have a, a shortage of technicians again um so we consistently have a shortage year over year for automotive technicians um because it does take a lot of brains to do it um, it does take some some brawn and some willingness to get dirty as well. So it's got kind of all those elements in there. Um, for some of us, fantastic. For some of us, you know, maybe not so much. So it's, uh, it's really up to you. Um, but we don't really seem to have any issue getting students placed at dealerships. Um, so, you know, we, we have a pretty good idea of if a student's going to be able to get a job right away uh, or not. So... Um, and to that end, um, I'll just pause for questions. Are there any questions at this point? 
if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat and um, we can actually filter that for Laura for you. So feel free to type in the chat <clears throat> if you have any questions. Okay, great. Um, so I'll just kind of continue on just to uh, be mindful of time. So other than being a technician, I mean, that's your foundation. That's where you get your start. Um, but after that, if you're really good, some people end up being field service engineers. Um, so the woman on the left hand side here, um, that's Brittany George. She's a field service engineer. Um, she originally wanted to be a nurse, but then fell in love with the Corvette and decided to go to an ASAP program. And so now she kind of runs that whole area. And if there's a Corvette question, she's the one that you want to call. Um, and so there's also actual engineers that work in Michigan. Um, and they are actually, you know, testing and tuning engines or suspensions, brakes, all of those different things. Um, and then there's the corporate manager side. Uh, we've even had some students go into other areas besides automotive. And this would be like repairing medical equipment or working for um, Metro Rail, like working on uh, subway trains, things like that, um, or even like industrial mechanics. So since we're training on basically every kind of system, hydraulics, electronics, mechanical, um, your skills are really transferable into any industry. Um, so we, we've had students kind of branch off into other careers um, over time as they, you know, as the need dictates or as they feel uh, is suitable for them. Um, sometimes in order to get into some higher level jobs, you may need or want a bachelor degree to um, be competitive. And so we actually do have transfer agreements, uh, not really common for automotive, but um, we have some schools that you can go and get your field service operations degree online. We also have uh, Fair State University. You can go there to Michigan and it kind of works the same as the ASAP program where you're in school for a period of time, but you also have an internship um, arrangement as an engineer with a manufacturer. And so that's pretty cool. And from Pennsylvania College of Technology, you can do that all online. And that is for your automotive business management degree. And then you can go and get your MBA from there. So it's a, there's just like a ridiculous amount of possibilities through automotive. Um, not a lot of people take advantage of that, but you know, some do, some don't. Um, so here's, you know, a couple of our students. I mean, this is kind of like a typical lab day. That's not going to be <laughs> what it's going to be like in the fall time because of COVID. So this is pre-COVID, um, but hopefully we'll be through that this semester or at least, you know, by next year, we'll be back to fun, back to having a good time in the lab um, and learning stuff. So uh, this is the program head right here on the left side, um, Mr. Keith Brown. So he, he runs the uh, GM ASAP program. And here are the tools that you'll be using. So we have a toolbox basically for everyone to use while they're on campus. And we had a refresh recently. So this is right before we moved all our equipment back into the lab after um, our floors and walls got painted. So pretty decent area. Um, here's our collision repair shop. So the collision repair program is basically completed in two semesters, fall and spring. And uh, it's very, very hands-on. And we have a new paint booth and it's very project oriented. So that's a, you know, really fun for a lot of students. Um, a lot of us just like to take those classes <laughs> just for fun, even if it's not uh, career oriented. Um, we also have a heavy duty diesel program that is at the Manassas campus. And that is, of course, your full 16 week semester. Um, there's no internship there uh, formally, but a lot of students get hired um, part time or full time at uh, local businesses if they are enrolled in the diesel program. Um, and then, of course, we have welding. So welding stations, I think the welding department just got like a whole new facelift. So um, I don't know what it looks like now, but uh, this little picture in the bottom left corner. That's what it looked like before the renovation. And uh, so we've even got some more upgraded equipment. But yeah, you're going to be under a helmet. Uh, you have individual ventilation. So um, the COVID issue uh, should not really affect the welding program too much um, in that capacity. But these are just some of the projects that they do. 
um, while they are in the welding program. Um, and that is basically uh, part-time. And the reason you go to school part-time is to allow for, again, an opportunity for you guys to get out into the world and practice the skills that you use here. And uh, you'll be very, very marketable um, after you get out of the welding program. So uh, the welding program definitely fills up very quickly. So if you are interested in that, I would say, um, you know, contact us and start, you know, get started. Um, so to get started, well, this says get started for sponsorship, but just to get started at NOVA, <laughs> um, apply to admission to the college, financial aid, attendant orientation, registration lab session. Um, I will actually be holding one. Let me uh, share. And Laura, while you're pulling that up, there was a question. Um, that when asked, do students have to be U.S. citizens or residents or have legal ability to work to be sponsored? Um, so if you're in the ASEP program, then yes, you have to uh, be able to work. Um, mm -hmm. But we have had international students uh, come in and apply for a particular visa that the uh, program head Keith Brown knows all about. He's been through that rodeo before. Um, and so uh, since it's a part of the program, usually they're able to um, get that through. Uh, so I don't know right now uh, how Citizenship and Immigration Services is operating. I know that they're operating at a reduced capacity. So I think that the current COVID situation would be really the only thing that would be hindering, let's say an international student or you know uh, another student from being able to obtain um, a work permit. So we would just kind of have to try it and see. <laughs> um, but there's always the global automotive program. So we do have a, uh, a regular global program that runs the full 16 weeks and there's no sponsorship um, or internship attached to that. Um, although students who want to work part-time, you know, can work um, and often do work when they're not in school. Um, but if you would like to sign up for an automotive orientation or registration lab session, um, we'll be going over some of this info and even more. Um, you can go to the NOVA website and what I like to do is just type automotive in the top right corner here and what that will pull up is our website right up at the top. And we have a place to register for our automotive specific orientation registration lab sessions. So we will have a counselor on hand. We can register everyone. Um, it does take care of that uh, registration lab requirement in order to get started. And I will finish up my PowerPoint with uh, contact info and then that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, and then we can get you signed up. I would recommend uh, signing up for maybe the July 8th one, uh, which is sooner, because we will probably have limited capacity as far as how many students will be able to fit in each class. We won't know until probably that registration day, uh, which is going to be July 8th, but uh, we are hopeful we'll be able to have a full class. And uh, so, yeah, sign up. Um, if you have any questions, you can always contact me. Yes, my email address is really long. I'll probably just go ahead and put that in the chat box <laughs> so that you can copy and paste it. Um, also, for collision repair, uh, you can contact Jeffrey Brown. His email address is a little easier, gbrown at nbcc.edu. Um, and if you have any questions about the Manassas campus, if you want to take automotive over there, uh, diesel or welding, then it's jhicks at nvcc.edu. And I think I'm right on time, right? I do. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Laura, for um, this wealth of information. I know um, for Brittany and I, we love listening in and partnering with our different program areas because we just learn so much. And um, of course, you know, a lot of us have cars, so it's nice to know that we have somebody that we can always reach out to to say, hey, Laura, so I went here and they said this. And, you know, you might be able to tell us a little bit more like, well, this is the reason why they're doing it. And that, you know, it's something that you do want to have done. Um, so I think that's really important. So thank you so much for sharing um, the information um, with us. So no, thank um, you. We appreciate it. 
Yes, and if people, um, if you still have questions, feel free to still type them in the chat. Um, we'll be monitoring those. Um, Laura is actually also one of the co-hosts, so if there is a chat specific to um, something automotive, she can still answer those questions in the chat for you. Um, you might just put Q and then put automotive, so then we can distinguish um, between those. But what I'm gonna do is introduce you all to our next speaker here. Um, Sue Dixon is with the, um, it's allowed in campus, right, Sue, um, for the horticulture program. And, we're gonna, and you know, it's been really exciting as well, um, getting to know Sue back in March and seeing her presentation. We all were just like, oh my gosh, we have got to go see all these beautiful places that she's talking about. And then of course, due to COVID, we all couldn't travel, but um, it's made, you know, this time a little bit easier too, though, to kind of appreciate nature and what's around. And I even sent Sue a couple of my links of some flowers and little things that I've been doing um, over the past couple of months. So um, thank you so much, Laura, for being an inspiration on that automotive side and helping us. And then Sue, thank you for inspiring us to just really appreciate what's around us in this area of horticulture and learning so much more. So we'll turn it over to Sue. And I know we've got some questions that are in the chat about automotive and please keep um, typing things related to horticulture and um, we will help answer those questions and or, or have Sue answer those questions as we go along. Thanks, Sue. All right, uh, can you see my screen okay? Yes, it's perfect. And you can hear me okay, yeah? Yes. Great. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Sue Dixon, horticulture uh, professor at Northern Virginia Community College, Loudoun campus. Um, so uh, good news about COVID-19 is that horticulture uh, has been an essential business or an essential uh, need for during this time and um, many of our students are thriving. So, uh, so anyway, so let's jump into it. So what in the world is horticulture? Some people really don't have an understanding at all of the specifics of it. Um, and um, basically, it's the art and science of growing plants. So it's not only uh, just getting out there and digging in the dirt. You've got to know why the si you need to know the science behind uh, growing plants, um, as well as the art, because it's a combination uh, career. Um, there, there's art and science in all facets of horticulture. Um, so let's take a look at more of, of what a horticulture is all about. Um, you know, it, it's really interesting the, of the wide range of people and interests they have that attract them to horticulture. For me, it was science and art. Um, but for others, well, for me too, um, I'm an outdoor enthusiast. Um, uh, there are some people that uh, are, love extreme sports, and so our arborists, uh, tree climbers, are um, fantastic at that. Um, a lot of people interested in botany uh, and this, the science and biology of uh, plants and how they grow. Um, a lot of people in, uh, are interested in ecology, environmental sciences, and uh, here's where we can make a big difference for the planet. Um, one quote yard at a time or um, one uh, property at a time. Um, and, and then um, artists, historians are interested in horticulture in our classes. People that want um, to run their own businesses. So a lot of people have interest in uh, knowing about business work and uh, of course, we've got a lot of plant enthusiasts, plant nuts, uh, people who are interested in uh, growing uh, vegetables organically. Um, and that has been a big surge here during COVID-19, people out and gardening. Um, and then um, uh, insect and pollinators, people that, are, that love butterflies and uh, the pollinator insects, uh, beneficial insects. Uh, and so maybe you have some of these interests or you've got something uh, unique that you're bringing to the table. And that's really, really wonderful. At NOVA, here's what we've got. Um, we've, we offer two associate degrees, um, uh, horticulture technology, 
So the, your major would be um, sort of the balance of uh, horticulture theory and practices, and you would then use this in commercial and ornamental horticulture fields. Um, and I'll go into more of those details uh, about those careers, okay? The second degree we have is uh, landscape design specialization. This is where you're learning all about uh, a site, um, client's desires, uh, how to organize a design so that you have a really wonderful, functional, beautiful space uh, in the end. Okay, usually it, our, our curriculum is two year schedule and we have a, a really good sequence of courses that you would take. Uh, and uh, we have uh, one on one faculty advising. Um, we, we build a really strong community uh, with our students and our students with each other. Um, and so, you know, the deal is you could go to a four year college, pay, um, oh, I didn't do the math, uh, a huge amount of money. So like, I think a four-year four degree, um, you, you would pay, um, I'm sorry, I don't have the numbers, but uh, really our program gets you the equivalent of knowledge um, as you would get in a four-year, but do it in two years. When we designed our curriculum uh, for, at NOVA, uh, 1974 and onwards, uh, we um, compared our classes course for course with four-year colleges. We, we matched their syllabi. We did everything um, to teach the exact content that you would get a four-year college and we do it in two years. Uh, so uh, the mar job market is huge right now in horticulture. Um, and uh, just uh, growing and uh, again we we have more job um, uh, opportunities come to us than we have students to fill them um, so it's a really a, 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 an area that's in big demand all right so the different sciences that we focus on in our horticulture program are botany um, the biology of plant propagation why it works the way it does, uh, uh, ecology of, in the, in, of soils and the science and the chemistry of soils, entomology and plant pathology, that's um, insects, both beneficial and pest insects, as well as plant diseases and how to uh, deal with these different things. Um, and then we teach over uh, 400 plants during the for uh, horticulture technology you will learn, and uh, design, you will learn 400 woody plants, uh, herbaceous plants, tropical plants. Um, we also have uh, arboriculture, which is a real science of how to care for trees. Um, and then environmental sciences are integrated into every, just about every class we teach. So. Um, plant communities, uh, soil types, and soil, uh, different com plant communities that would grow in different soil types and um, uh, environmental situations. All right. Um, so we also focus, ha have some uh, required, a required business class to take. Um, and we do that because so many people that come into horticulture want to start their own businesses, uh, run their own design firms, landscape contracts contracting or uh, being grounds maintenance or gar fine gardening maintenance, uh, greenhouse and nursery. Uh, so many of our students uh, work at Merrifield Garden Centers uh, and, uh, and uh, others around the city. All right, uh, tree companies, wide range of skills and positions uh, in tree companies and as well as accountants, some of the people to do the books. So. Um, Right, uh, the art facet of horticulture is, is uh, a landscape design we, and both, both, for both degrees, um, we require one landscape design class uh, and this is where you basic learn the hand drafting um, and principles of coming up with a landscape plan. All right, uh, and then they go into more detail if you decide to take the landscape design program. All right, 
Um, so here, uh, if you also, um, IT, uh, if you're interested in, in uh, information, information technology, uh, we integrate that into our program uh, with um, computer-aided drafting and design. Uh, we have, uh, we use a Dynascape, Sketch 3D, and other programs, um, uh, which are all um, provided by the, co uh, uh, by the college. And we also have our own um, compute, uh, laptops for students to use with the software on it. Um, and uh, so it's a really awesome situation there. Also in uh, other in fresh technology uh, niches would be in urban forestry. Uh, the, um, calculating the tree canopy cover in cities uh, with using GIS and remote sensing software. Uh, and you can also, and then you can calculate uh, what services those plants uh, provide and the, uh, you know, how much money it saves the city to have trees in the landscape to capture uh, rainwater, to, to capture runoff so you don't have to have as large sewage storm drain systems, um, uh, you know, cleaning the air, providing oxygen, things like this. All this can be worked out um, with uh, computer programs, all right? Also, uh, everyone loves uh, to grow food or loves food, okay? And uh, right now we're running a class called Four Season Food Production. Uh, so we've got, uh, and then we also provide, uh, offer classes in greenhouse production uh, where we learn how to grow vegetables and flowers uh, in the greenhouse. Um, and uh, then uh, arboriculture is then now a required class for uh, both degrees. Um, and if you wanted to start as a ground, uh, ground person, a ground worker in arboriculture, you'd uh, just start at $15 to $20 an hour up to sales management, uh, six figures. Um, and you've got to be smart and think on your feet. Um, and uh, uh, not only do, uh, though are you doing tree removal or pruning, but also um, integrated pest management and sales and um, renovate, um, uh, grounds renovation, tr a, uh, old tree preservation, things like that. We also um, work with uh, identifying some uh, tropical plants for interior scapes. Green walls and green roofs are um, moving um, niches in horticulture right now. And uh, so we do some of that. On our campus at Loudoun, Here's what we've got for our students. Okay, uh, 5,200 square foot greenhouse with three bays, um, and it's all computer and uh, automated. Uh, we, uh, so uh, then we have state-of-the-art classrooms and laboratories that were designed specifically for our horticulture needs and our horticulture class needs, um, and our high-tech design uh, classroom as well as uh, our, specific, our, our student study room and gathering space. So this is where uh, you would form uh, friendships with study partners and study for uh, exams together beforehand. Um, and, and this will resume uh, at some point once our pandemic is, is uh, eased. Um, and then um, during our program, students will design and then build uh, some of the gardens around our Nova campus, okay? So these are two uh, gardens that have been built and constructed and designed, including the gazebo by our students, okay? All right, we also offer a couple of classes in viticulture, um, uh, wine growing and brewing, all right? So if you're interested in that kind of thing, Come on to Nova. Here's the, the most wonderful part of our program is the uh, internship. And yesterday, I just got a letter from one of our students and I'm just gonna read you a little bit of it because it just expresses uh, just the spirit of our horticulture program. Here it is. It's officially been a month in my internship at Save a Tree um, and I'm having a fantastic time. 
Every day I get the opportunity to utilize the knowledge that Nova gave me while also learning something new. I've been working with the plant health care crew, the lawn health care crew, and the sales arborists. And I've found out what I want to do after I finish the horticulture program at Nova. It's a lot of hard work outside in the heat, but I never felt so secure in my decision to work somewhere. Not only is it a great opportunity, but it definitely feels like a great company to work for. They actually take the time and effort to care for the plants and make informed decisions based on what's scientifically correct, but also what is aesthetically pleasing. So not even two weeks in to my internship, they were asking me when I finished school that they would have a position for me uh, when I uh, am finished, okay? Uh, thank you all so much for your love and support over the last three years. I honestly don't think I would have found um, such an amazing opportunity otherwise. So that just sums up um, what uh, you can, just the satisfaction of, of taking classes and then really finding your niche in uh, a career. Um, so here's one of the places where many of our students do uh, internships, Oak Spring Gardens in Upperville, uh, other internships in um, sustainable food production. Okay, as your, uh, and, and many other places than you know, North, uh, U.S. Botanic Garden, uh, things like that. So um, when you're uh, in our program, we have a horticulture club. Uh, we have a horticulture STEM day, which is an outreach day where about 400 people come through our classrooms and um, we do special presentations. Um, so uh, then we have a winter plant, uh, plant sale uh, at, that students have grown plants in the winter, students grow plants in the spring, and we have sales for those as well as in the spring we take all of our plants to the Leesburg Flower and Garden Festival downtown. Uh, fantastic weekend, a great experience there. We also have a horticulture career fair where we have um, uh, vendors, where we have people who want to hire you uh, come to our campus and we have a career fair. People get uh, jobs um, that evening uh, as well. We also do uh, campus beautification. We have a registered monarch way station garden. Uh, we do also offer in, uh, training for arboriculture certification as well as uh, nursery and landscape certified horticulturalist um, certification. We uh, are a uh, testing site for them. All right, so where do our students go when they're done? Uh, uh, Wolf Trap National Park uh, uh, employs several of our students, uh, Green Spring Gardens, Meadowlark Gardens, uh, and at these places, the um, uh, internship uh, pay is about $15.50 an hour. Uh, up to the manager, uh, horticulture manager is about up to $90,000 for an experience, you know, and that would be say after five, 10 years of experience in the field. Uh, we've got students working at U.S. Botanic Garden, actually, um, and, and uh, Norfolk Botanic Garden, Smithsonian. Uh, we've got a student there who is one of the managers and uh, National Gallery of Art, um, outdoor and indoor um, horticulturalist there, uh, and uh, a lot of landscape contractors and design firms hire our students um, where the salary range is from 40 to 75 and even up to three figures. Um, and um, Mount Vernon, many of our students do internships at Mount Vernon as well as work there full time. Uh, Fairfax County Urban Forest Management. We've got students there that uh, focus in on preserving trees um, when developers are um, proposing their plans, uh, making sure that trees are preserved as well as uh, trees are replaced properly to keep the city environment healthy. All right. And we even have a student who graduated from NOVA uh, with our design degree, picked up, moved to France, 
uh, now designs and installs green roofs um, uh, in Europe. Uh, and then our Nova um, Higher Education Center building has several green roofs. So um, come on uh, and we can do a tour sometime when the time is appropriate. Um, I'm gonna, uh, let me just show you a couple slides. Uh, the beauty of, of NOVA is that um, our faculty has been experienced in the fields in which they teach. I have a, a master's degree in horticulture, but worked in the field for many, many years. Here were some of the places I worked. I was ground manager at Keswick Hall outside of Charlottesville, Virginia. I was also a, green, a perennial plant production manager at uh, Elsroth Thompson Greenhouses. I also was a salesperson and con wrote contracts for uh, landscape installations with JW Townsend Landscapes. Also was the head horticulturalist at Woodbury Forest School, a historic uh, boys boarding school. So i uh, got a lot of um, experience under my belt and I know the science and the art of horticulture and want to pass that on to you. Um, so, um, are there any questions? Uh, Tiffany, do we have any questions? Um, um, we don't see any in the chat, <clears throat> but I have a question, Sue. Um, sure. With, um, I know you may have already covered this part. Um, will it be, I guess, a hybrid kind of a format for the fall and spring or? Yeah, for the fall, what, we've, what we know um, so several of my classes that I'm teaching, um, uh, Landscape Plants 1 and Woody Plant Identification, those two classes um, will, uh, so we have anywhere between six and 10 field trips for those classes. So they will be outdoor field trips, socially distancing, um, everyone wearing masks, so we can uh, have our classes held outdoors. Um, awesome. we also, we'll probably have um, a hybrid component where um, you see the, the greenhouse uh, space here. Um, we're going to convert that into some of our laboratory space. So we definitely can socially distance there. Um, and so we can do activities and everything um, that way. Uh, so there will be a combination of the way our classes will be offered in the fall. Excellent. And we had another question. Um, is there sure. a capacity to the number of students that are accepted into the program? Uh, no, it is wide open. Um, so we, um, some years we have, um, oh, let's see, probably, um, probably about 40 to 50 students in the program and then I teach you know a total of, of, of 90 students sometimes so um, yeah excellent and then Sue are there um, and you may have covered this part already um, are there a lot of the things that are around the Nova campus since we have multiple campuses do our are our students involved in any of those projects or did you cover that already and I mean oh yeah so you can see all these projects here in these pictures on this slide um, all these uh, gardens uh, in between the uh, life sciences building and the greenhouse students um, uh, design made these designs especially and this one here is the students designed it uh, and then in our landscape construction class uh, installed it uh, even created like the trellis work here um, and uh, the fountain area, uh, the benches, all that you see in this photograph, the students did, as well as this one here. Um, this is where we have our, um, this is like a final exam set up for our uh, tropical plant identification exam. Um, so, yeah. Um, uh, and, and, and any other questions then? Nope, I think we're good on the questions. Okay, so um, there's my um, uh, contact information as well as Anders Vinstrand, our director. He is uh, our 
point of contact for this summit. And here is his contact information down here. Also, we do have a web page um, on the NOVA web page. Just type in horticulture and that'll take you to our uh, horticulture web page. And so this question, is, um, Sue, is for both you and Laura. Um, if people wanted to access like these PowerPoints, is it something that is shareable for the participants or um, it, is most of the information something they would find on the website? We just oh. had a question of being asked about the PowerPoints. Right. Um, I, I could uh, submit it to you. Or we, we're fine to share it. We just wanted to, we just needed to know if you all were okay with it being shared. Oh, you would save absolutely. It as a PDF format. Okay. Yeah. Would save it as a PDF. Please, please. Okay. Uh -huh. we would okay. Yeah, it. definitely. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, navigate away from Sue's screen here. Thank you. And thank you so much, Sue, for your time as well and sharing with our participants about our, um, uh, about the, you know, the horticulture program. And we're really excited about learning even more today from both uh, the automotive technology and the horticulture programs. And I'm gonna actually end the session and then follow up with a few more announcements for you all. Thank you. Great to meet you all.